any, my Ukrainian is actually amazing. He said, thank you for supporting us towards the end. And he, uh, he highlighted Chris, uh, Crystallize and Roger as new players on the team, and he's trusting in them, and he's believing in them, and he's just thinking he's bringing them fresh energy. Yeah. Damn, is Starlighter paying you double for this? Yeah, <laughs> they, they, uh, they, actually are. they actually are. Impressive work, Shiver. I caught some words and just yes. went with it. It's so good. I, I love it when tournaments do this, by the way, because I, I, like, I don't really ever look up players. So half the time when I don't see them at LAN, I don't know what they look like. Oh, yeah. And I actually yeah. did not know what Roger looked like. And obviously, yeah. I have no idea what Crystallize looks like. So I was looking at the two of them. I was like, which one's which? <laughs> Now you know, and they are ready to play. And you see Havost standing behind them. I actually got a chance to talk to Havost uh, a little bit last week. And uh, he is just as much their mental coach as he is their, their Dota coach. And he said in regards to Roger and Crystallize, they're these young kids, like 16, 17, and they just they just go. They are very they're very uh, ballsy, not just in game, but also just in attitude. They're very, they're slightly on the arrogant side. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> like so the old school Havasa. Yeah, remember, yeah. You know, d double divine rapiers on gyro, running in, <laughs> diving towers. Yeah, yeah. He, he was having a lot of fun okay. working with the team, and he was having uh, he he had full confidence that his team was uh, you know on, on the way to do better. Even though obviously, as you said, God, at the start of the season they did really well, and they kind of slumped a little bit after that but uh, this should be the turnaround and what better place to do that than yeah. in front of their home crowd last time they were here they got runner-up to Vici gaming and mm -hmm. had a fantastic run so this is definitely a team that plays some of their best dota in kiev here at the cyber sports arena and then puppy similarly a player who's had a tremendous success here when he was on navi so a mm -hmm. lot of history here with uh, the two teams and players involved i was gonna say yeah what a what a better way to do it than starting off by beating puppy yeah Right? Former captain. I, I was walking in to the stadium this morning and uh, I saw, you know that store that's just outside? Yeah. The, it's still in like the hallway area. It's got a, you, they sell a bunch of peripherals and like shirts and stuff like that. I saw them stocking up, pulling up a bunch of Navi <laughs> stuff. And I'm sure like the, the crowd, especially since Navi's kind, I don't, I don't want to say that term, but Navi is getting back into form. Right, I'm not gonna say Navi's back. They're they're, they're a, definitely showing promise. Meme, but yes, they're getting back in form, right? I think if you've been a Navi fan, if you've gone through those low years, you and know, there like have this been so is the many glimmer people of that hope. That do that, that have done that. I know. So so now it's like you've actually got a team that uh, I feel like for once you can actually start believing in. Yeah. Uh, a bit, and I think that's just gonna reinvigorate their fan base. I think that shop is uh, is going to do great business today, yep. uh, but it also will slightly depend on how Navi perform right now because uh, you know they do need to do well to impress their fans, and they have started by banning out the Puppy Chen, very clever move and uh, a very different scenario in terms of draft compared to what we saw earlier this morning with uh, Necro is still in, Venom is still in, Lich is still in. And those series also being somewhat ignored in that last series it is very much kind of team by team, region by region, where we'll see these key differences. Wow. Dude, I was like, I'm, okay. I was going to say, God, you're more than welcome to try and do any predictions on Navi's draft. I'm not going to even try because I swear to God, every single time I watch them, like I can't figure out what their their drafting style is. They have very high amount of variance. Like who first picks Tiny? It's so weird. Like, I, I'm just looking <laughs> at that picture. There's this tiny holding a tree that I'm like, I don't think I've seen that in three years. Tiny standing alone yeah. in the picked hero I, section. I saw the tree first. It's like, well, is that a glitch? <laughs> but there's tiny standing next to it. What is this hero? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we've seen some IO tiny over the, the past few months, complexity being one of the teams especially to run it. But And likely that's where Navi's going. Yeah. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. They, they just want the tiny. Okay. Coddle okay. tiny. You get that lower cooldown in some of his spells, and tiny does have a lot of mana problems. But they know something that we don't. It's going to be one of the first times that we've seen uh, Lich. Have we seen it at all in this tournament? I don't think we have, I have not, since no. the line started. So um, this will be the first time that we've seen it. Um, it's been largely ignored, but I do think it's uh, particularly strong against tiny, who does uh, a wealthy amount of physical damage those very strong right clicks, but his attack speed is obviously quite low and it's going to be all the slower yeah. with that Lich armor out. And Lich Doom is a classic duo. Yeah. Right? That goes back quite a ways because Doom has always been on the lower side when it comes to armor. Great HP, great regen coming out of Scorched Earth, but has an armor issue. This dual lane is extremely oppressive. Like, they, that safe lane, I don't know what they're going to do to be able to shore it up because yeah. that lane is just going to be terrible for them most likely. And uh, the Puppy Doom, that's how they won Shanghai Major. So is this a number four position Doom? 
Uh, I reckon, or five for that matter. I mean, I don't think it's a five because there's a lich, but you never really know. Either a four or a three. Um, yeah. More likely, I would say, the offlane because of the dual lane cap pension with the lich doom. Mm -hmm. I think it's you typically want to yeah have that lich doom and then have some like strong four position for Yapsor that can kind of roam around, secure the safe lane a bit. We're seeing Ace play a lot of these safe lane uh, carries that can be a bit more independent. He plays a lot of those really annoying the necros, the venos. He plays the brood if you really want to like run like a, a one position doom uh, brood as well. So uh, he is a player that's very creative with his picks. Yeah, I was, I was definitely leaning towards off lane. I can't like doom puppy obviously fits his style pretty yeah. well. Yeah. But I think it, like this aggro dual lane is so strong, particularly when you already have like one core potentially revealed in the tiny. Like tiny's not gonna have a fun time with that whatsoever, because he's also pretty high HP, low armor. Um, so the infernal blade, I almost lost the name there. The infernal blade of the doom is gonna be particularly effective against him. As a laning phase, they don't wanna they don't wanna match the tiny against the. Lich Doom at all, so they're gonna need a better safe line, like I don't know, like something that's really self reliant. If you have a, if if you have a tiny, would you place it like without IO? That is, would you place it actually on the safe line? Wouldn't you still? Wouldn't you maybe go mid? Uh, depends on the matchup, right? Just because they picked it up so early, like I'm leaving open uh, the possibility that it's a tiny support. Um, yeah, I agree. Just okay. because they pick it up so early and they don't pair it up with a Wisp, that you can't necessarily run it mid if you're facing up against tougher hero like Vipers, say. Um, you know, you can do that matchup with a Wisp because of the extra support you get from all that yeah. the regen. But without that, it's a lot more difficult to say. Yeah, I wonder if there's like some kind of like side pull they have planned with the toss. Mm -hmm. uh, offlane tiny theoretically could be a thing, like a dual lane in the offlane, but we get a lot more info about secret stuff with this Earth Spirit. This is, I think the main issue with running the Puppy Doom is then you're putting gaps around Lich, which is kind of limiting what he can do as a playmaker. So he's going to be on the Earth Spirit here with uh, the Puppy Lich. And this does put Doom into a core role. Most likely the offlane. I think very rarely we've seen like a one position Doom in the safe lane, which is probably not what we're going to have come out here. I like the uh, Batrider ban by Team Secret. Flung felt that's been strongest hero from uh, General. Like going going back to the last time when Navi first picked him up, that was like all he ran in pubs. The big hero that's undefeated that we haven't seen picked up or touches the Earthshaker. I, mean, I was saying Blitz and I were talking about like dude, this Earthshaker yeah. is so <laughs> strong, like one of the best heroes in the game, and he seems like now nah, we don't we don't care about Earthshaker. Well, Navi actually has been playing quite a bit of Earthshaker, yeah. so surprising. I have some other ideas here. Hmm? Spirit Breaker into, into the Lich as well. Hmm. You don't agree? You don't agree? Nope. Feels like it's more to match up versus the Earth Spirit as that four position roamer, but not necessarily the easiest matchup because Earth Spirit does have ways to cancel that charge. Yeah, and I feel like. Uh, like going back to the Earthshaker, I feel like he is also a pretty suitable matchup to the Earth Spirit, just because you have uh, such a long range stun. Mm -hmm. Like he, Earth Spirits are always going to roam on mid, and as an Earthshaker, you just kind of chill out in that mid area a lot of times, just waiting to counter gank yeah. whatever the uh, enemy four position tries to do. Let's see what now we have in store. This Spirit Breaker likely puts Tiny onto the, the core roll, whether that's. Safe lane, mid, off lane, hard to really say. Razor picked up. Very safe here. Huh? Yeah. Does it does that say anything about? I mean, does it say that we're gonna see tiny safe lane? Because Razor is more of a little bit of a mid hero. Uh, it could be off lane tiny. Yeah. That's uh, another possibility, particularly with the keeper of the light. Um. Razor can always go safe lane as well if they do any sort of dodging. Um, rather than going mid. Like right now, I look at it as Razor versus the Ember Spirit yeah. in the mid lane, yeah. which is great. But you could still run safe lane Ember Spirit. It's not fantastic, but. Let's see, what do they need to have for their last uh, last pick here? Which uh, boxes haven't they ticked yet? Uh, Team Secret have a, a lot of um, like pretty good skirmish power. Like they're pretty good at fighting, particularly 15, 20, 25 minutes, like that kind of area. They're mm -hmm. very strong. Um, maybe a little bit before the tiny starts ramping up and the Keeper of the Light gets his, his big ags, which is his big team fight mechanism. Um, I would say like either just the later game carry or um, a high ground 
a high ground hero because they do not have a hero to right click towers. Yeah. Uh, Amber Spirit is notoriously bad at that. Yeah. For Navi, it feels like they just want to fight, which is where Ursa getting banned out does make a bit of sense there. I um, wonder if they're going to consider like the alternative being like the Monkey King carry we've seen a bit, but definitely a game where it looks like you, you're running Tiny as a potential carry or core hero. That That's a hero that just wants to get a lot of kills, isn't really played in that farming type role. If you want to farm with a Tiny, you may as well pick like a Sven or something. So uh, very likely we're going to see Navi playing very aggressive Dota. Trying to overrun yeah. Team Secret. And that's the kind of play you want to do against Lich. You don't want to let this Lich just like sit back, passively deny creep, secure the lanes, and have this just slow paced game. Well, they ban out the Terror Blade. So that's one of the, the cores that they don't want to see from Team Secret, yeah. which they, by the way, have a 100% win rate with. Then again, they do have a 100% win rate with a lot of heroes because they've been doing so well in the qualifiers. Now we definitely have the, the most peculiar draft we've seen all tournament. Like, I yeah. like they're doing something different, and this is probably something that Secret's just like looking at, like, well, I don't, who knows what they're doing lane wise? Who knows what, like, these are heroes yeah. that we haven't, like, Tiny, Razor, like, we aren't seeing these heroes get picked very much. This is why I'm letting you talk during the <laughs> like, Navi last pick, because I don't want to, I don't want to touch the, the Navi draft every single time. Yeah. Like, their, their, their drafts are just so different every single time, too. I can say which, which cores they've played a lot. They've played a lot of Lina, they played a lot of Drow Ranger, <sighs> they played a lot of Void. I would feel like most likely the Dendy mid Razor, as Kat mentioned, just the good matchup versus Ember is going to be the selling point there. It really is all about like what they want to do with this Tiny. What do you think works for them? It is a CK. I mean, they have two combinations where they just lack the IO, but I'm sure. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> a really good Chaos Knight game. Um, a lot of this table. A, a lot of it is dependent on the initiation and who manages to get what spells off first, but they, like Team Secret, do not have good ways of being able to deal with Chaos Knight. Like most of the physical damage heroes that you would tick through, um, they're gonna be really hurt by the fact that you've got a Gap Closer, an Ember Spirit, and they also have this hefty Lich Armor. So, but Chaos Knight doesn't care so much because he overwhelms that armor, right? He, he does so much physical damage that he just kills that hero on sight when he pops his Phantasm. It is where you can bust out like a last pick Medusa if you just want to like try and hard counter the Chaos Knight, be able to instantly clear those illusions. Yeah, run safe lane, Ember Spirit, Medusa. Yeah. Um, that still wouldn't feel great against Razor, but. Oh, you can even leave the Ember mid and just run the Deuce in the safe lane as yeah. well. I, mean, I guess there's not many heroes that you're going to be happy about versing the Razor in mid lane. It's just kind of, you have to accept it's going to be a, a tough lane matchup unless you're picking like a, Le a Lena type hero, which. Because if you be if you would go for a Medusa type hero, wouldn't that be a very greedy lineup from Secret? That because they, they don't really have that much fight potential early on, apart from the Earth Spirit Lich. Uh, Deuce is a lot less greedy naturally um, when she's facing against Chaos Knight because your build is dependent on the Aghanim Scepter rather than the late game items. So you come online a lot faster as a Dusa when you're okay. specifically counterpicking him. Thoughts on a Lone Druid? Kind of cool pick. I think they. Maybe eyeing off running the Lone Druid in the mid lane against the, the Razor. You can suck damage from the bear, but at least you still have some way to last hit. You've got the Savage Roar to help break the link. If he starts like in the mid to late game, if he's linking, you Savage Roar him, you run it away, you can break it. So it seems like a stable pick. And it makes up for what Cap mentioned, where they can't take towers. They don't have a hero that takes objectives. So that's going to be the Lone Druid. Yeah, they. Um, I, I think the a lot of teams look at Chaos Knight and look at it as that it's such a problematic carry to run. Most safe lane heroes are just not going to be happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, that it's better to pick heroes like Lone Druid or Sniper who have a really big range advantage against the Chaos Knight. You just prevent him from getting on top of you in the first place. Okay, well we're going to find out how the CK and how the Lone Druid are going to work out uh, for these teams. It is over to OD Pixel and Fog for the first game of Team Secret versus Navi. Thank you very much, Shiva, and indeed, what a series we have ahead of us. Secret versus Na'Vi. We've just seen the two lineups, and we're kind of looking at it fogged, and, th and this lineup for Na'Vi is, is pretty crazy. I can't help but feel that this may be the influence of having sort of Havorce, the coach on stage, saying, pick this hero, <laughs> it fights. Pick this hero, it fights. Oh, CK, he's a good carry. We'll finish off with him. This is some high-action lineup from Na'Vi. I, I'm totally thrown off. I mean, it's it's general playing the tiny. We were kind of looking at him, we're like, yeah, okay, it's going to more than likely be that offlane tiny, but... What variety? This is something they haven't ran recently, no similar heroes. This is just totally different, this completely different page. And for Secret, a lot of a, a sort of a similar page. That whilst this is going on for Navi, yeah. this draft, Secret themselves are like, well, we'll, 
We'll pick Yapso, his, his Earth Spirit. We'll get mid one on his Ember Spirit. These sort of hero play combinations that they are incredibly scary on. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to see if Na'Vi may have the solution here with uh, an all action, all in, all fighting lineup. They've got like very little team fight on both sides. Mm. It's like the Earth Spirit, the A Lich, and the Ember are the big team fights for Secret. And you look at Na'Vi's and it's like, oh man. <laughs> they need like Phantasm to really take fights. They, it just looks like they're playing a mostly run at you lineup. That's what we we're kind of the panel was kind of saying as well about Navi. So we'll see how much pressure they can put with this Coddle Tiny Lane versus a Lone Druid. But yeah. man, what a what a change up from the drafts that we see from each team. We see Newbie in complexity duking it out with heavy team fight on both sides. Now we come into this secret Navi minimal team fight, just battle, battle, battle. And Aww. as you can probably hear in the background. There's a couple of Na'Vi fans Just that have turned up. We've even got a Na'Vi fan cam, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. The fans are excited. And you can be sure we're gonna hear some cheers as well for Secret, of course. Here there are a lot of fans of Puppy and the like. And so, a lot of people excited to see the Secret lineup, which, oh wait, not only the Secret lineup, but this Na'Vi lineup. These are both lineups that have sort of had a bit of up and a down, you know, both brands that have, but now they're in a point where these teams, they're both winning qualifiers. These yeah. guys are great at the moment. Yeah, Navi, of course, like we were saying, they had a really good start of the season. A little bit struggle afterwards, but definitely been showing the up and rise. We, just, me, me and you got lucky, and we got to see some of the Dream League games from Dendi, and he was going berserk. So now it looks like Navi's trying to win two of the lanes in a way with the uh, Coddle Tiny Bottom. They should build a farm just fine versus that Lone Druid, spamming constantly with the Avalanche and the Illuminate combo. And Razor should do quite well versus Ember Spirit mid, but Yapsor is going to be the difference they're rolling in and putting a lot of pressure on Razor who can get chased down if they are able to catch those positions. But top lane, that's where Secret has their big advantage. They can put a lot of pressure onto Crystallize once they get a couple levels up on the Lich and the Doom. And yeah, you playing Lich or playing the CK versus a Lich is always painful in the laning phase. Is there a certain creep that if Fada finds the, the lane sort of over it, like well, what's the super OP creep for this Doom to find a lane? It's always the Seder. Yeah. That, that creep is just so absurd. But you just do see them blocking their own hard camp right away uh, on the side of Navi. They block with a sentry to make sure that Fada can't go find that big creep there. And on the opposite side, it looks like Navi wants to make sure in that bottom lane, we see where, like, with the Absor roaming down there, uh, they want to be able to pull that lane constantly, the side pull. Because they tried to sentry it, but they sentried right outside of the box so they can make sure they de-ward if it does get warded up. And Yapsor starting with a different build. He's Noticing that it's not really the greatest lanes he can gank individually with like an Orb of Venom, so he starts with the boots so he can easily make the rotations between each lane. Yeah, and talking about rotation on the other side, I mean, how easy is it going to be for Seneco to find somewhere that he can sort of charge into a Zing at the moment and being sort of 1v1 by Fada? Seneco will still grab the rune, and in fact, Seneco. Oh, Poppy could have been in some trouble here. Yeah, look for the charge through. They hit off the stun. In they go. Can they control him up? Fada's going to come in and try and hold back Na'Vi. He gets the clap on them. The slow is overwhelming. And, and Yapso now. rotating now. Yeah, they're looking for potential turnaround. Seneco still trying to finish. In fact, he gets it. Seneco. Indeed, the Orb of Venom kill does the job. He choo-choo's out of there. He's going to be fine, Seneco. Didn't even need the bash. I can't believe he get away, gets away with that, especially with Yapso TPing in. It looked like Secret were about to turn things around. Yeah. And he kills himself as well, making sure that Yapso can't clean him up. Mid, quick rotation though. Puppy TP's mid. Mid one, chasing down Dendi. They're walking him down with the Flame Guard. Dendi oh, is actually going to die. Yeah, three heroes mid. Too much for Dendi to deal with, having both Puppy. Mid one and Yapso chasing him down. Yeah. So, so Secret, quick to get the return kill. Starting to see a bit of what Navi is trying to do with this Coddle Tiny. He is double stacking constantly on those two uh, camps, and he's going to get that farm down there while the Tiny is just chilling bottom. They throw the scan, so he is. they do know that the Coddle is doing that, but there's already two triple stacks down there for uh, Roger on the Keeper of the Light. Yapster is moving in to contest right away. He doesn't want this Coddle to be able to farm that type of stacks. Getting the big level advantage could be quite devastating to make sure the Tiny always can spam his combo. Let's see what Yap can do about it. A couple of snaps to Roger. Roger. He's level two on Yapsor, yeah, but the charge is careful. coming out. They are going to look to try and turn the smash and the roll coming in onto Roger, but Seneco's there with the save just in time. The bash as well, holding him out for Roger. The neutrals are starting to beat into him, but he'll turn. Yapsel's going to look to try and deny himself, but he's not going to be a successful as Seneco picks up another kill this action. Seneco in the right place at the right time, saving Roger and turning it around. Just like the panel mentioned, it's a hero that matches up well versus the Earth Spirit in the laning phase. You, you're always able to find if he's going for those dive plays because you can just charge and catch him out. Just looking for the rune here, boulder smash from Yabzor. Wants to make sure he gets the bounty rune. And they punish him here. 
they can't kill him, but they can just chase him and give him some extra right clicks. Yeah, just a little bit too tanky, even just level two, but Spirit Breaker being a Spirit Breaker. Hard to be into. How are we looking on the CS? Anyone really falling behind it? It doesn't look like it at the no, moment. It's, it's quite even all around. The Coddle is going to be the big difference because he's farming those uh, stacks, as we were mentioning. Deadly. Oh, Seneca will be held back by the Boulder Smash. But just his mere presence seems to be enough for, for Secret to back up. They have to use the Boulder Smash defensively to hold back Seneca, and therefore they can't go for the kill on Dendi. And Dendi in the mid lane, actually, but out of the lanes, that's probably the one where we're seeing the biggest difference. He's 21 yeah. and 11 denies against the 17 and 1 of mid one. It's a Razor favored matchup yeah. for sure. The damage link, you have such low armor on Ember Spirit. Plasma Field also breaks the Flame Guard until you've got the level 3 Flame Guard. And it's, I mean, it's Dendi, right? Look at the denies. That's just standard Dendi. 11 denies in the laning phase. Bottom lane, though, going to be quite favored for Ace. Level 5 already now on that lone druid. He's going to have a jolly good time. And Fada as well, farming very heavily in that top lane. That's what we were concerned about, is this Doom can get so much up there, and he should be able to punish the CK bit whenever the Lich is there. But they, make, they made the rotation. Poppy's playing mid lane with mid one now. Yeah, sort of once they get aggressive on top, though, get throwing the pings out onto the CK. It's very hard to do so, especially with Seneco up there. Very much close and ready to react to any sort of play from Secret on that top lane. I like how Navi's uh, putting the river wards. It's something to make sure you can always see where the Earth Spirit's roaming around with. I think that Secret actually could use some of those to make sure they know exactly where the Spirit Breaker is. Just keep tabs on where he is rotating so you can go for those type of dive maneuvers. Yeah, I mean, as we've seen so far, Seneco definitely being the, the big issue for the movement Secret has tried to make. There are so many stacks in this game, it's insane, actually. You see Ace pinging out a quad stack at Navi's hard camp, and then uh, Secret actually has their own quad stack at their hard camp bottom lane. We can see on the camera on the bottom left there quickly. So this is going to be some Illuminate farm with some Avalanche toss combo farm. They could, they could get quite ahead because of those stacks. Once Fada has that level 6, especially with the fact that he's got those phase boots, this crystallized CK has to be very careful up top. Yeah. Any sort of opening, Fada's in there, and the backup from Yapsort is very close behind. He's level 6 at least for the Phantasm, so he can. He's pretty strong if they're able actually, actually to isolate anybody with the Reality Rift minus armor combo. But I think we're going to have some pretty enormous fights around these uh, hard camp stacks, Owen. There's a high a lot of value, really, yeah, indeed. Building Ace, up in those camps. Ace is probably like, I'm not going to be able to contest this one fully. We might need an Ember rotation to try to take them. But at the same time, mid one is farming his own triple stack. So this is stack Dota coming out from both Navi and Secret for the time being. Yeah, maximum efficiency. And so far, seven minutes in. No one really breaking away. Very, very close between these two teams. Yeah. Dendi's getting a bit more out of the mid lane, but they did this on purpose because mid one is just farming triple stacks and jungle creeps while Lich sits middle and just soaks the experience. As you can imagine, we're putting them in a pretty similar position in terms of net worth. Yeah. With Dendi and mid one. Actually picking up a smoke here on the Ember mid one. See if they are going to try and go for a movement. They want to battle around that stack, and they want to take it. That's the biggest thing that they can do right now. Those those camps are incredibly important right now in the game. He okay. gets he gets his smoke broken, so they do see the spirit oh, breaker. Oh, jumping straight in onto Snake. Oh, he tries for the TP out, but with the boulder smash from Yapsor, there's no escape. You can see Navi ping out the hard camp too. They realize how important yeah. it is, but mid one has other priorities in mind. Dendi now farming the other uh, area. The triangle we like to call it, call it of the ancients medium camp and hard camp but then returns back to the mid lane they've got a charge coming through onto the top and they do have that phantasm i wonder if they are going to try and do something with it, it looks like now nah, they're just going to keep crystallizing the lane kind of comes a little bit too far away tried for the bounty room but Seneco there in time to pick it up in front of him He's definitely at risk of dying if, uh, Fada that is, if he steps too far up in there's rotations. But with mid one coming up here now, it looks like they're trying to get aggressive onto the CK. Yeah. And a full, an arcane ring rune on uh, mid one as well. Yeah, Crystallize and Snake do have to be careful. Even coming in with the remnants, but they will put the Phantasm. He gets a couple of the illusions out. Now he tries to turn. Chains hold back an illusion. Crystallize pops the stick charges. Now General with a rotation. Avalanche onto two. But Yapsor's there with the three man combo. He's brought down one. They're taking a second. The Doom's out from Fada and Secret. 
Shot Navi down there on the top lane. Yapsaw in the right place at the right time. Hits a beautiful combo. Yeah, literally the perfect timing. And the Raindrop, this is why we've actually seen Tiny kind of fall out of favor. Raindrop really absorbs quite a lot of the burst that is there. So we do see Fada starting with them very early. But yeah, clutch timing from Yapsaw and very nice remnant and chain usage by mid one there to continue the pressure. And he jumps right back up there to keep that siege going on the top tower. Charge. Mount on to Ace. Only hit Seneco and Roger here, so nowhere near enough damage to deal with that. In fact, he's nice, got a turn. They do take the, the card camp, though, and you look at the Coddle CS. We actually just look at the net worth this time. The Coddle is getting up there, about even with Earth Spirit's clean rotations. But the cores on the side of Secret are definitely out farming quite a lot over Navi at the moment. Yeah, Facebook's now on Dendi, but indeed with that play up top. Quite a bit was found there for Mib on this activeness of the Ember Spirit very early off, paying straight up for Secret. That movement's crystallize and general. Back up on this top lane, very hard for the two of them to do something, especially with Secret having Mib 1 being backed up by both Yaps or and Puppy on this top lane. Yeah, they've got a lane ward, so they know that that's coming in. They have to be pretty careful, especially because Phantasm's down. General's just going to farm, and just they're going to let this tower go down for sure. Yeah, the Razor's... Razor needs more time. We've been seeing this build coming out from China a couple times. The Aquila phase boots into Mask of Madness on the Razor. I think it was Old Eleven that we saw do it, right, in Dream League? Yeah, we saw Old Eleven do it a couple times in Dream League. Yes. It yeah. didn't really have the greatest success, but it looked like you could understand what the concept of it was. You know, you just this super fast Razor running at people with Max Link. Crystallize is going to be... Uh, Roger should be pretty farmed this game on the Keep It Light. Now taking out both of those hard camp stacks, that we, as we see right there. Already should have the point booster finished up now. And on way to good timing of the Aghanims, but the cores are struggling. And as we said, CK versus that Lich Doom lane will definitely start falling behind once those rotations start coming out from the Earth Spirit and Ember. And this is a this is a very nice Ember Spirit game. There's little to no lockdown to really grab him. Sure, there's Tiny Toss and the Avalanche, but those aren't reliable. Yeah. Same thing with the Charge. There's nothing really sort of blink an instant. Yeah, there's always going to be time for for mid one to react. Yeah, there's no shaker, there's no sanking, there's no silences oh, either in top lane. Straight away. I mean, Dendi does get the ultimate out, but the amount of damage coming out from mid one with that flame guard is too much for Dendi on the Razor. And Secret pick up another bottom lane. Na'Vi trying to get aggressive, but the Chain Frost Bounce is coming out as well as the Magnetize, bring General down low. Ace is also chasing Seneco off to the side of it all, gets the kill onto the Space Cow. They do manage to finish oh, off General as well. And now Secret, they are ramping up the pace. Na'Vi starting to fall apart off the back of what was a relatively even laning stage. But as soon as these movements come out, as soon as you start to see mid one leave that mid lane, things have gone from worse to worse for Na'Vi. Yeah, Secret's making the right moves at all times here. And they have much more reliable, easy heroes to kind of gank with, with these kind of ultimates and combos. Tends to happen when you're playing with Lich, right? You're looking to win the early game quite hard, and it's working out very well for them. And we looked at Na'Vi's lineup and we're like, yeah. They need to come out pretty decent in this laning phase to give space for the CK to get online. Mid one, hunting for Roger right now. He's eyeing him up there on that top lane. Roger will be fortunate. Backs away, mid one not, not happy with the situation. Doesn't want to go for the jump. Mid lane crystallize. They want Puppy, but Yapsor's in the area. No, we have to be very careful. They do have that ward though. They've got quite a lot of burst, and Puppy does not have a raindrop. Yep, so already used his raindrop for the urn, but Fado walks up, and with the double ice armor, he's got the ice ogre as well. Oh, he's sitting dirty. at 17 armor with 1,500 HP. There's no way you bring this man down. There really isn't. No one in it, even with the phantasm and such. Fado's going to be able to walk the majority of it off. You are going to see up. They might get mid one here. Yeah, they're looking for him. He is out on his own. Initial bash catches him out. And with the combo, they get the kill. Mid one there with a bit of a mistake. He saw, I think he saw the uh, Spirit Breaker for a split second. He tried to change, but there were so many creeps around that it hit the creeps. And that is a big kill for Na'Vi. Of course, mid one being the top of the net worth. Any chance to take him down, they will be over the moon with. They need time on Na'Vi's lineup too. So yeah. those kills are incredibly important to buy the CK time and the Coddle time, which they're prioritizing the Coddle a lot this game. He is ahead of the Chaos Knight in net worth. Oh my, he is. Yeah, he's, he's he's yeah he's up there. You're he's right. He's 1,500 gold away from the Aghanims. All right, okay. Secret smoked up. They're looking for Dendi, baiting the rune. Oh, Dendi, don't do it. You're too young. Oh, straight away. 
The Doom is down. He's muted and so is the crowd hit. <laughs> Dendi is out. Secret again, just not giving Na'Vi a break at all. Looking quite nice for Secret at the moment. Being able to pressure all the lanes. CK still in catch-up mode. Almost has the arm lift finished. That's when he can start getting involved. And like the panel mentioned a little bit is that, you know, they don't have the greatest things to kind of clear the Phantasm if he gets to that super tanky method, but it doesn't look like Secret's letting up for that. And it looks like Secret really wants to pressure early too. We see Fada even ignore the 80 Devour bonus gold. He takes the 275 health. So this Doom is 1800 HP with an immense amount of armor. I don't really know how they bring him down unless they fully isolate him, but Secret really looking to gather up, and they're getting the plans to deal with that CK physical damage, even a medallion being bought on Poppy nice and early on that Lich. What do they do? Na'Vi, grouped up towards mid. They want to try to go for the pressure of the tower and catch the Coddle who's spamming that lane. Look they at this. for a wrap around yeah, here. Yeah, Secret are ready to go deep. They've got the Chain Frost ready there. More than happy for Na'Vi to try and tackle them head on in a team fight with the edge that Secret now have. I don't think Na'Vi can fight this one. Doom is still on cooldown, actually, though, for 60 seconds. But this Doom is so tanky. Oh, they're just going to look for the Coddle. Go straight in. We'll get blasted back there, mid one. He's just running in. He's just dive in the tower. I mean, General drops the combo. And Fada, he doesn't even feel a tickle. He'll walk off. We'll back off. As Phantasm comes out, Crystallize. Is not going to be lucky with the RNG, though? Only gets one Illusion out this time. Can they actually fight with it, though? It's, looks like he's just going to summon his Illusion and just hold his hand by the tower. They saw the uh, Phantasm now, too. Top lane. Oh, so they could get the bear. All okay. right. 300 gold into the back. But now, pays with his life, potentially. Magnetize and root, bringing him down low. He's pretty tanky. He should be all right with his stick charges as well. But now the rotation is coming out from the rest of Secret. They have Doom online soon. But they're making so much space for this Lone Druid, and he's got the Radiance queued up. Look at the deny onto that tower. That saw Dendi try and steal the damage from the bear there, but didn't get any damage actually onto it. So Lone Druid was able to recall it out of the Static Link range. Navi's going to have to make a lot happen during the daytime with this Coddle Axe. It's almost finished up, about 500 more gold till he's got it, but they are getting invaded quite heavily, and they still need to be able to catch up. They still need the CK and Razor to farm more, but Secret, they have such deep aggressive wards now that they're seeing all of what Navi is actually getting to do and where they're farming and their movements. Tiny's still quite a ways away from that blink dagger, and he, his net worth is dwindling. Yeah, we are 17 minutes in. This is a a poor general offlane Tiny. Mid one, he's got the defensive remnant up. This is a hard kill for them to go for as well. He just slides and jumps away. Well, the just, lack of catch. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. The disables are not reliable versus these type of heroes like the Ember Spirit. What do Na'Vi do, especially once Ace has oh. that Radiance? Where did the Courier die? I just saw Na'Vi's Courier actually go down with uh, one of the items on it. So more gold going the way of Secret. Yeah, it looked like it was just the wand or such, but I mean, every yeah. little counts at this stage. Na'Vi okay, it's just the wand, but... yeah. Okay. They do nearly have that Aghanims on Roger, at least. 100 gold. The thing is that usually when, I, usually when I see this Coddle Aghanims, it's like, okay, they've got Coddle Ags, they've got kind of like some heroes that can hit towers and they can take advantage of it. But looking at Navi's lineup, they don't hit buildings. The only way that they can hit buildings really is with the Phantasm or with Tiny who gets Aghanims way later. But, yeah. I mean, he's going blink. He's the offlane Tiny. He's not getting farm priority by any means. Yeah, the farm difference just slowly ramping up more and more. I mean, was, uh, the difference there just went from like four or five to seven. It's a 7K net worth lead now for Secret. 7K gold lead, like a 5,000 plus experience lead as well. You, Fada is just really prioritizing the aggression. Only one point in Devour, and like we mentioned, it takes the 275 health as well. But he's incredibly tanky, and he's gonna be going for Shadow Blade to catch those back lines. But yep, we see the Coddle Ags. They smoke under vision though. What can they do with it? As you say, Secret should be well aware of this movement coming in and indeed straight away mid one moves aside to join the rest of his lineup. Ace is going to have the Relic in a second now too on the Lone Druid. And that's one of the really big timings on Secret. You always say that about the Lone Druid, of course, but for this game, he's their only really big building hitter. So once they've got that online, we'll for sure see Secret group up and try to put more pressure and gain their lead. Navi. 
Trying to find objectives here as a team. Using the Phantasm to push down this tier two. Yeah, daytime Cotalags are trying to make something happen. Maybe they could try and find a fight as well. They're up on the high ground, charging onto mid one, but again, no further follow up. Will be blasted to the sidelines. Has a remnant out, jumps himself away from the team, and now Yapsor comes forward. Chain Frost bouncing around as well, but Yapsor's down. Navi, they find one, they find two. The, the Chain Frost still bouncing. Dendi getting done in by the bouncing balls. The root comes out from Ace. Secret will find a second in return. Two for two at the moment. The Doom still taking down Roger. Not quite enough damage. Roger will survive. The Fada's not done yet. Chasing down Crystallize. He'll look to try and toggle his way out of there. With the Avalanche, he may just make it. The Shrine's available. Na'Vi get out. Just a two for two. But with the uh, the deficit they were at, Na'Vi will certainly take those sort of trades. Yep. It still is two supports for a core and a support, though. But yeah, they're still pretty happy. They forced reaction. They alleviated some pressure off of their lanes. And they almost took out the tower. Got down to half health. But now, that was their daytime movement. You know, the first few minutes of that. And now it's nighttime. But they do have Blink now on Tiny. They could look oh, for some aggression here. It's scanned out, though. It's a, such a tanky doom. Can they really take down Fada here? Even with three heroes. They don't have Reveal, either. And he has a Shadow Blade. That could be a problem. Let's see how they decide to go about this Yapso as well. On the back lines. So Na'Vi won't quite be able to get the vision they need to jump. I think Secret just needs patience right now. They're about to have Radiance online from the Lone Druid. It's nighttime. Yeah, they're pushing out the two side lanes. They don't want to pick a fight just yet. And they have Ward Vision as well. See that nice Ward being placed by Yapso, seeing all of Na'Vi walking through it. Well, the TP's coming back now. Na'Vi have to be careful about how they choose to go about this. Secret ready to fight. Mid one charging forward with the Remnant. Looking to close in onto Dendi. Dendi able to juke it off to the side. They're, they're looking for the look easy the kills. Cuddle. They're trying to get Roger. They want to get that, that man out of the fight, and they will. That's going to be Roger down. Secret looking for more, but Suneko's out. The rest of them do escape. Only Roger to fall. Mid lane tower will go down to the creeps. But again, we're seeing it. Na'Vi, as soon as the five man of Secret turns up, they just have to get out of there. Especially when they don't have their CK. You've got Crystallize trying to catch up with the farm on that top lane. Pushing it out. And he is getting some space. Closing in on the money for that Echo Saber. I'm still con very concerned. This Tiny is falling further and further behind. He's now the same level. Actually, lower level than the Lich on the side of Secret. They really need the CK to get absolutely massive for them to take these kind of fights. Again, Na'Vi trying to use the, the advantage of the high ground here. Eyeing up Puppy. They're going to go straight in with the ult, the combo. And whoa, my goodness, Puppy. Miles up in the air, but he gets oh, the, the chance frost. to come with his chain frost. It's just destroying Na'Vi. They've lost two, they've lost three. Dendi to fall as well. Puppy walks it off. In secret, they're not done. Mid one trying to chase. We'll get roared up. But no, the root. It catches out the CK. Crystallize. He's trying to bring down the bear. He will get the 300 gold, but he's being surrounded slowly and surely by secret. He's trying to man up, but again, the root connects. The silence as well. Mid one keeping himself alive with a slider fist. And they don't just get the CK. They're going to get Roger as well. It's going to be a team wipe. Secret bringing down every member of Na'Vi. Oh, God. And whoa, that's Puppy says that's what happens when you try and start the fight on me. He just turns Chain Frost them in the face. And this this lineup of Na'Vi that wants to be in your face is, is sort of countered by, by the Chain Frost. Yeah, the Chain Frost, there are multiple melee heroes that run into it. Puppy as well, prioritizing, buys a new raindrop so that whenever he does get gone and he can't get bursted with that medallion, with all that bonus armor, Na'Vi cannot just cannot kill him. They can't really kill any of the heroes on Secret. Yapsor is pretty much the only one that they can bring down. Yeah. And the bear, of course, you know, the spirit bear. But Ace is incredibly tanky, and we see what happens now when you try to take those fights versus Secret. If they turn up, they have the team fight advantage. Na'Vi does not have team fighting heroes. Especially with that completed hood on, our, on Puppy as well. There's no way that Na'Vi can burst him. Even in a, a situation where they outnumber They're trying for it again now in the mid lane. The recall's coming out from Roger. They're trying to bring the Tiny in for Lich, but Lich has a hook. He doesn't care, mid lane. Bottom lane as well. Fada's actually going to try for a solo kill. He oh, spots yeah. out the Breaker on his own, drops down the Doom onto Suneko. Slowly and surely walks him down. It'll be an easy one for him. And as you say elsewhere, Puppy more than healthy as Na'Vi just can't burst through that hood on him. And Secret, with that kill, they'll head into the pit. And there is very little to nothing that Na'Vi can do about this at this stage.
Yeah, and having that medallion up plus Lich Armor, the Rosh doesn't do the crazy amount of damage, but now it's daytime. So it, they are, Navi is aware of it, and it's a very hard thing for Secret Tag, okay. Contest versus the Illuminate Spam. But now they're just going to push the side lanes out, wait for some time, wait for another fight, probably wait for just the daytime to run out, and be able to take that Rosh. Mid one, at no risk of dying majority of the times, unless he makes a mistake. Mid one. Maybe with that Maelstrom gold, 2.7k Navi. Go for the smoke up. They have to pick fights around daytime. It's the only way that they can back, get back into this game. Maybe they could try to go for some cheeky rush. It's a really quite risky, but... I mean, they could try. With the Reality Rift minus armor, when it goes off All again, right. it should get down quick. And they're going to be pretty sustained because of the Coddle Blast. This would be pretty nice if they get away with it. It's and I think they might be a secret aware of this. The pings do come out. It's pinged out. out by Yapsort. It should go down before oh, they get it's there. It's going to be quite close. Uh-oh. It's been scanned out. Secret hold on the chase. Fighters moving in with the Shadow Blade. They've got the Sentry down. They've got the Vision. Rosham falling. It looks like Na'Vi will be up to secure it, though, and they do. They grab the kill. Crystallize gets the Aegis, and now straight up. They look for Yapsor. Uses himself up. The Chain Frost is out as well. Bouncing around the Lusions. Crystallize trying to bring down Puppy, but he just can't. Gets rooted up by Ace. Then he's moving in with the ultimate, looking for the bear, but the Savage Roar's there, pushing Na'Vi back. Root out onto Crystallize. Can they bring him down the once? Does, of course, have that Aegis. Uh-oh, Sinekos in trouble. Stuck by the Ancients. Is he going to get killed by the Ancients, oh, though? Oh, he's going to get killed. He will be denied by the Neutrals, but that is Sineko down for 30. The Aegis also goes down as well. Crystallize does tick down and die finally. So they may have snuck the Roche, which was a, you know, like we said, a cheeky play, but they still cannot contest versus Secret's lineup. This Chain Frost is it's proven to be them. so powerful. And we saw there as well, they went in on Puppy. Crystallized with the Phantasm, but this Lich with that armor, Crystallized just doesn't have the items to bring him down at this stage of the game. I mean, this, this Lich is sitting at 21 armor when he throws yeah. ice armor on himself. Not to mention if Doom throws the ice armor as well. Shiva's being built next for the Doom. Great item versus CK, not only to, of course, have the AOE damage that includes it, but the minus attack speed is quite relevant versus Navi's heroes. Really lacking that damage now on Navi, as we've been seeing in multiple engagements. I think the fact that Navi were able to get that Roche is still testament to show that these guys, they can still pull off, you know, sort of the sne sneaky objectives. But can't Even fight. though Secret is so far ahead, I mean, that's the problem. When, it, when At the end of the day, it is going to come down to fight, fighting. They can't. They can't wrap themselves to victory with this lineup in mid lane. Secret, ready for a pickoff, and they go. Roger, out. And this is this is all during daytime, as we were mentioning. This was Navi's time to really make stuff happen, try to get themselves caught back up for the CK. But it's about oh to be nighttime no, now in 50 bottom. seconds, and they Bada. catch Crystallize. He just walks in with the Doom. He does have the backup. Navi are there. They're watching from the sidelines, but they're leaving him from the sidelines. Crystallize will not be getting any help today. Puppy could be in trouble. JK, the Hood of Defiance is up. He just turned Blast down General. Chain Frost as well for the BM as General to fall. Seneco trapped up in the trees as well. Secret again take a fourth. It's 22 to five with just 27 minutes in. 12K I, gold lead here for Secret. I don't know how they can really catch up in this game. There's just the maneuverability from Secret's too fast. Every time that Navi tries to go for a play like this, everyone from Secret's just there instantly, and they get turned around on just way too quickly. And these towers, easy for the taking here with the push that this Lone Druid offers. Ace having an incredibly solid game, had all the space in the world, and he made sure he made the most of it. 14K net worth on this Lone Druid. 28 minutes in, Secret now taking objective by objective, and Na'Vi unable to stop them. They'll have the full five-man backup. There's a charge coming in on Puppy. They tried for this so many times. This time, Puppy is a little too far away from his teammates. They should get him. Yeah, I say they here. should get him, but Yapsaw's in with the stun. Silence as there well. We they do manage to finally bring down that icy man. Much needed kills. Anything at this stage for Na'Vi is is a huge success that they can find a kill be it that position position five puppy it's still huge puppy does now have the completed pipe out for next time oh man that, that negates a lot of the damage from well that negates most of the damage from tiny and a lot of the illuminate damage 
And just I was taking a look at the scores too. Suneko has nine deaths in this game. He's really been struggling. He had some. He had a good start. He had a good start, yeah, but he did. It's just the responses from Secret just too fast whenever they go for those type of charge plays. Yeah, I think that, that was sort of the problem that the panel mentioned. You know, charging into this sort of a lineup. Sure, when they're like level one, level two, you're going to be able to find openings. But as soon as this lineup gets ahead of you, they are so beefy. Yeah. And Dendi, the hero that probably wanted them to make the most space for the CK, he's also he's zero and five. He's unable to really find the positions to do much. Just the sheer team fight coming out from Secret just way too overwhelming. Secret starting to take over the map as well. Fodder leading with the shadow. Seeing if he can get anything off the back of having Doom ready and available again. Yapsol to roll forward. Only has one stone. Well, two stones now in the Earth Spirit, but I think that's still fine for them to take the fights, especially during nighttime. They're getting a pretty good wraparound, and Dendi could be the culprit here. To be very careful with his movement. Actually going back through the river, he may have just avoided disaster. I said uh -oh. that their father's there, looking for the opening and straight up with the Doom, he's ready to go. Root holding back the charge from Seneco, quickly TP's out of there. Oh. Dendi actually getting kicked by Yapsor, so uh, there'll have to be a bit of an awkward chase, but it looks like it will still be a successful one. Rare mistake by Yapsor there, I think he tried to geo-pull geo the stone in and then get the kick, but the kick actually went off first, but they still find the kill inevitably, so it doesn't matter. Navi trying to play around their award vision, trying to get anything they can, take out that tier one, but Secret too quick to respond and now they've got a full AC finished up for the Lone Druid. Ember Spirit getting online to be able to clear those phant that Phantasm, getting the Maelstrom, also Lincolns. I don't know how they kill this man. I think we really are starting to see, you know, Na'Vi, they, they tried to do something very different. Something that we, you know, looking back at their previous games, they haven't done a draft like this and it is not paying off for the most part so far. 31 minutes in, still secret increasing the amount that they lead by and Na'Vi with no no way of stopping it as it feels. It's getting to some scary levels at this point. 15k net worth lead, 15k experience lead, CK forced to go BKB, now into the heart next. Usually not the most ideal thing. If he just gets doomed up he's still yeah. quite easy to be brought down. Same thing with Dendi, but they're they're forced to go for these BKBs. The sheer amount of magic damage and team fight, as we keep reiterating from Secret. They're gonna go for a smoke as soon as it turns daytime again though. They have the gem as well and glimmer cape on Coddle, so they're trying to make whatever they can happen during those days. I mean I think that's you know, sort of going back to what you said as well about Farming that axe on the call, has it really done much for the lineup? Mid lane crystallized, pops the BKB, jump forward as he looks to grab him. Puppy does have the Phantasm charge forward as well. Puppy in trouble, remnants coming forward. Puppy still alive, trying to walk this one. If he's going to make it as well, Puppy's going to live throughout it all. The boulder smash comes in onto Dendi. Dendi, Dendi cannot chase Puppy, and Na'Vi lose both of their cores, crystallizing Dendi down for a full minute. That was the fresh BKB usage as well, and he can't kill the Lich during it. Oh man, Puppy. Just gets turned on. They killed that fan those Phantasm Illusions so fast. He's not, he doesn't have the heart yet, you know, it's not those super tanking ones, but either way, at this point, at this deficit, they can kill the Illusions just super easily with the amount of minus armor and just the magic damage. Oh, and damage. look at Yapsil. He is starting to dive into the base, just jumping up to the tier fours as such. Forcing back Roger on the call. He will get away with the... Invis and Aiko, looking to charge in and cut off the creep wave, but in comes Midbon, straight up with the slide and the chains. So an Aiko down once again, and Secret will be able to protect this wave, pushing in on the mid lane. Yeah, he's just, he was trying to cut the wave, he doesn't yeah. want them to walk in. Roger now starting the blasts up, they're probably going to look for a quick dive onto Roger as soon as they see him. And they've got the chains, it's the McCabe top, the boulder smash is on point. They try and juke it out, but they've got the vision once more. That Shadow Amulet coming to work. He won't be able to avoid the chains, but the Flame Guard's ticking him down. Mid one finishes off with the Slight of Fist. Crystallizes his bag, but of course there's no Phantasm. Na'Vi lose the mid racks. Secret killing couriers. This game is this game is impossible for them to come back. Ace is just going to kill all the buildings. They can't take these fights. Coddle's their big big power hero. He's dead for 30 seconds. It's it's looking extremely over now. What can they do? How long till the Phantasm? Maybe they're waiting for that. 25 Christmas. seconds. They're right now, they're going to tap out anyway. Na'Vi called GG Secret. Absolutely destroying Na'Vi on all fronts here in this game one. I think 
game two, we can certainly expect Navi to take a, a deep breather and come back with something very different. This lineup just clearly doesn't work. It was very unorthodox kind of draft coming in from the start. I mean, it's a first pick tiny. Right away, you pick a second pick huddle. It's, it's, you can kind of see the movement that they're trying to do, but secret, their, their heroes are so mobile. They're able to pick every single time of the fights. So I think they wanted to be able to pressure more during the daytime, use the relocate and try to outnumber Secret. But Secret, every time, they, the Lich would survive and they would bring four heroes in or five heroes in and just take the fights. Their team fight was just way too overwhelming for Navi's lineup to kind of deal with. Absolutely. I mean, it was one of those lineups that would have you would have loved to see sort of, you know, have some success at the start because it's all about the action. But yeah. at the end of the day, Dota is Dota. Secret know how to play it. They, they know their strengths. They know what's right. Navi trying something a little bit different here in this game one. It was a complete failure as they end 34 minutes in, what, 27K gold lead for Secret. There was like, what, a bit, sort of a minute of, of positivity at the start of Seneca. He did make some good movements. You yeah. know, on the Space Cow, this, this Spirit Breaker started to pick off a couple, but then the pace was slowed down, as you said. Puppy, the Lich, one of the reasons why We've not been seeing a lot of it because the Lich sort of has this effect on games. Everyone's so tanky and Fado going the health as well. It's, it, they just ran at Na'Vi and they were unable to respond. Well, that's game one, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what happens in game two. But for now, we'll head back to the panel to hear their words and thoughts. Yeah, thank you so much. That was a very one-sided game. Unfortunately for Na'Vi, they were not able to take the game against Team Secret. And, uh, well, yeah, that's why you ban out Lich. That is, that is pretty much a summary of that game, sitting here together with gods and capitalists. Other than the Lich, I want to take away some other things of that. Yeah. Maybe don't pick off lane Yeah, tiny. that's, that's oh, yeah. the hero you got to look at that game, I feel. Uh, sure, it wasn't so just a tiny. Um, it was what it did to that draft. Like, it was the tiny's role in that draft. Like, he was like their mid-game playmaker, they're initiating. They're relying on him getting his blink. He got his blink so late because Cuddle's playing greedy, he's farming. Mm -hmm. um, the Spirit Breaker also gets pretty hard countered by Ember. It's a really bad matchup for, for Spirit Breaker because you can always cancel charge. So you also can't really gank Ember because he can always easily escape. He did die once in the top lane, but it wasn't too big a deal. So Tiny couldn't really do anything. And by the time he has a blink, as the casters mentioned, he, everyone's tanky. They get health yeah. talents. They get yeah. Both Raindrop and Doom have like an insane health talent. At Lich level has 10, the health right? talent. They it's both have two fifty or something but like that. Yeah, and they get frost armor as well to add to that. Yep. So I think with all the, the health talents, it, made, it actually made a tiny useless. Tiny had zero impact this game. Yeah, and I think um, I mean inherently their their draft they were so focused on being able to win the laning phase. Yeah. Because um, Chaos Knight is like he's naturally strong in the laning phase, but if he happens to lose it, he really he doesn't have a good way to climb back into the game, right? He has no natural farming mechanism. But Chaos Knight, like sometimes you would see Midas's back in the day simply yeah. because it would help him get along. Why did they not win the lanes? Because I would think that a Cottle Tiny should be able to beat Lone Druid. Ace just plays safe. Yeah, Lundra just sits back, farms with his bear, keeps his hero tucked away. We saw his hero often just hiding under the tower. His bear so might poke. He can always damage. just poke. He can scout the danger zones where you're going to get ganked from with your bear. So if they're ever like missing, you just send your bear to where like that big camp is. You, you can figure out where the heroes are, uh, and there's not much more you can do. Ultimately, there you see. Uh, a lot of greediness coming out of Secret's drafts, oftentimes, um, mm -hmm. between, especially with the combination of their two supports. Like sometimes they'll pick the Chen for a puppy, and then they'll also pick a like a playmaker for Yapsor, for yeah. right? And then they'll still pick something that naturally scales a bit for Fada or something, and then they have this hard carry mid one. Ace, like part of the reason that works is that Ace's playstyle in his safe lane right now is very, very like self reliant, and he's very conservative. Right, like so, he's oftentimes on a hero that is going to be able to be solo a lot of the times. He also has to be able to deal with a lot of pressure and still be able to find farms. So you'll see him oftentimes abandon that safe lane mm -hmm. in favor of jungling and situations like that. So this is uh, a playstyle that I feel like Secret is very familiar with. Right, in order to make the laning phase work, they put a lot of pressure on the opposite lane of Ace, and he just kind of chilled out and did his thing. Not a single hero from Navi on the top five hero damage. And that, that really speaks volumes in itself. The fact that there was no playmaking hero that had a good start and then could offer a lot in the mid game. Dendi was just trying to farm, catch up. Not even catch up, it was kind of keeping up, but it was just continuing to farm, getting picked off. Same thing for the Chaos Knight, a lot of the game. Tiny just couldn't make plays until he had a blink and even then it was too late. So 
it, it really was a complete one-sided stop. I don't think you can pick Tiny uh, in the first phase unless you're doing Tiny Wisp. Like, I feel like totally that's so agree. essential, right? Because yeah. Yeah. that could have been a shaker. You know, I just feel like yeah. what does Tiny give you that shaker doesn't? I mean, it's it's doesn't even scale better yet. Yeah, scales more as like a carry, but shaker scales for great into the late game. It probably was something that they practiced and they they're like let's totally. let's pull it out straight away. I mean, now they realize it didn't work. Surely we're gonna see something else entirely. Yes, it's both Navi I mean, drafts are. <laughs> they're, they're very different. From I mean, game this to is game, already so very yeah. different than what they had from uh, before. So you know, it's, it's only it's only logical yep. that we're gonna see something uh, something new come out from them. I, I don't want to take anything away. Like, sure, Navi's draft was wasn't amazing, but Secret played a very good, solid game. There yep. was there were great movements from them. They they like you said, Ace played very conservatively. He didn't get picked off, got left alone. And uh, yeah, overall, I, I thought they played a really solid game. Like, no real flaws. So you feel like they have something to improve upon next, coming to the next game? For a secret? Yeah. I mean, no obvious signs of weakness. I think, like you say, the movement was really good. Mm -hmm. Like, Yapsor was in the right. Like, the few crucial fights in the early game, that top tier one tower where there was a bit of a dive, looked like the moment where Navi were like, oh, they might get some kills and get some <laughs> momentum. Yeah. That's, yes. what, that's what that Navi need, lineup needed. They need momentum. It's, it's, it's a very kill centric draft. Their win condition is getting lots of kills. They end the game with six kills. So yeah, they're going to get stomped. Yeah. You pick Chaos Knight, you pick Tiny as cores. Yeah, these heroes don't function without kills. So that they really need to find that one good early fight. And Yaps was there to win, get a Get three hero kills and lose none of the top lane. Yeah, we can we can take a look again at uh, at the game as we have uh, a highlight video coming your way of all the plays that happened during this game. Uh, it this is uh, yeah, this this is where Navi actually gets a kill. Oh, this is a three for nothing, I believe. Yeah. Oh. It looks oh, like yeah. Never mind. I, I remember this. Yep. That, this is the, the exact what fight I was turn. just talking about, where Yapsor just shows up. Navi aren't expecting him. They think they have a numbers advantage. They can fight under their tower, and, and then they uh, cannot. And once I, when I saw that, I was like, okay, um, I think this game's over. Yeah, that that exactly was the fight where the game was lost. Yeah, if you can't if you can't win the laning phase and then you can't win that fight right there, then you you have like. You have no momentum built up, as you said, because like this Tiny is not really going to be able to do amazing against these heroes. You've got a, a Chaos Knight who's kind of stalled out from the get-go and isn't going to be able to farm into that really scary carry. And then on top of that, he's not against heroes that he's particularly good against, right? This is the Lich Dream. I just yeah, want to oh point yeah. that out. Like, melee cores, everybody group. Oh. There were two fights in a row where they like initiate on Puppy and he just lives Chain Frost, gets like 10 Chain Frost bounces. I'm yeah. just like, yeah, that's... That's a really bad sign if you can't kill the five position hero. Yep. <laughs> so. It's like it's so hard for Cast Knight because they, if you look at most of these heroes, they're all fairly tanky, and he can't let the Doom get his ultimate off before Phantasm is up. So you have to kind of play safe around the Doom, um, and then the Ember Spirit and Lone Druid are just natural, naturally heroes that are tough for you to be able to lock down as a Chaos Knight. Ember Spirit moves around so much, and Lone Druid's just so far in the back when he's in range form, and when he's in melee form, he's super tanky. Overall, it's just... You know, they try, and they really try to, to go for those fights, but every time there's an answer. Yep. Like, even here, again. I mean, so Yapsor is always there. Ember has got boots to travel. He would just TP in and turn a fight around. Yeah, Puppy lives still gets his all yep. up. Yeah. And yeah, that's, yeah they live. They they survive they for so long that they allow yeah. time for their teammates to show up because yeah, health talents, hoods, raindrops. They get all these just tanky items. Everyone's got 1,500 plus health at like 20 minutes. So. But it was mostly draft. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I don't. I don't think there's much that you can change about your laning phase decisions mm -hmm. once you've committed to that draft. Um, I couldn't think of a way that they could like change, um, like they they couldn't really go aggro try lane or anything against a long druid. The, they were very much set in the laning phase that they had. Um, I, I would like to see Navi in the future put more pressure on mid lane, okay. um, try and shut down mid one as much as possible. But it is hard to do because that's that's one of the things about the Doom Lich is it draws a lot of attention. Um, I, maybe they should have been like the only thing they possibly could have done was try and whenever you have these really oppressive aggro dual lanes is don't necessarily try and fight it but put pressure elsewhere yeah so you kind of punish the fact that they have a one support locked in 
in this one lane and it isn't going to be able to move anywhere. That's, that's but, what Secret did, you know, they just left Lone yeah. Druid down there against what was a pretty tough dual lane, the mm -hmm. tiny Coddle. And Coddle was playing a bit greedier, but it was the same concept. Yeah. I, I understand why they fought so much at top lane, though, because Chaos Knight's just not a hero that you can sack, right? Oh. You could sack a Lone Druid. You can't really sack a, a Chaos Knight so much. Uh, well, there is going to be a second game. Luckily for Navi, they have the chance of uh, forcing out that third game and make their way to the upper bracket of Group B. But before that happens, we're going to take a short break, so we'll be right back. <laughs> 